Well, well, well. Welcome back to Crowns Kudo Cave. It's a nice little Sunday morning over here from a very uh, actually bright outside uh, Helsinki, Finland. As you can see, the lights in the background have grown to new epic proportions. And you know what? You don't even want to see my second target on those babies because uh, it ain't even done yet. It ain't even close to being done. But <laughs> I do want to follow up from yesterday's analysis. We did hit our 7,500 target. So I want to talk about that in the lower term time frames, what I'm, lo what I'm looking for today. And also I want to do something fun today as well, talking about a macro. I want to force myself to produce the best possible case scenario for the low actually being in. Now, before I actually get into that, I want to say, hey, first and foremost, this channel is focused on traders and trading, um, and that's who we cater to. Um, so at the end of the day, you know, if you're looking for that sort of information, understand that we are cultivating skills here that really make it unnecessary for us to care if like the ultimate low is in or not, because at the end of the day, man, if you know how to trade, you're not really all that concerned with that stuff. You're, you're concerned with just, you know, getting your day to day in. Anyways, um, with all of that said, uh, I actually want to get into the live scene right here just really, really quickly and follow up on yesterday's announcement as well that all of the, uh, all the subscriptions for the indicators are actually now live. I'll make an official announcement tomorrow, Monday, because I know that most people are away on the weekends uh, but basically I want to uh, quickly explain what's going on we got the basic tier right here that is just access to the crown trading stochastics then we got the professional tier right here that is access to the stochastics RSI and Fibonacci and then of course the prized jewel tier right here with the, with with everything plus the jewel I want to say first and foremost these are not magic pills these are not magic tools at the end of the day if you do not have your if you do not have your risk management uh down which is not going to be covered in this that's a whole nother five to ten hour long conversation covered in the ta program um then it's only gonna be as good as a user so if you don't already have success with your trading then these are not gonna these are not gonna be the magic pill for you. Um, also, position management. This this we you know we will talk about it a little bit, just like we will talk about a little bit of risk management with these as well. But again, those are topics that need you know realistically like five to ten hours, which again is is handled in the TA program. So I want to get that out of the way because I don't want anyone getting into this thinking that it's going to be you know anything more crazy than that. There will obviously be videos accompanying this that uh, that explain the indicators of which we're actually making um, all new ones. So uh, those are going to be uploaded relatively soon, probably in this next week or two. Um, and uh, on top of that, is there anything else that I want to say? Um, yeah, yes, there is one more thing that I want to say. Uh, in order to make the process as smooth as possible, if you are actually going to um, get one of these, what you should do is when you make an account on the crowntrading.net website, which the link is in the description below, make sure that you fill out your profile with your Discord handle and your trading view username before uh, before subscribing. So yeah, okay, that's good enough for that. Um, I think it's time for a little bit less shilling and a little bit more uh, cryptocurrency analysis. So let's get into it right here. Um, and like I said, today's gonna be a little bit of a fun day. I'm gonna I'm gonna try to make the best bull case that I can. But for now, let's actually start off with just looking at the lower term timeframes because we did actually hit our target from yesterday, that 7,500-ish number, and have thus far backed away. And I wanna um, just kind of overlay this really, 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 really quickly here. So. You know, we were looking at this right and over here, a little bit of a symmetrical triangle, kind of <laughs> kind of sloppy in the way that it does, but that's Bitcoin on a weekend, of course. And we did hit the measure move back up here towards about 7,500. Thus, uh, sorry, uh, since then we've backed off a little bit and uh, now we are kind of still riding this governing trend line that's been governing our highs ever since, uh, what was this? Um, uh, since we got into this sloppy consolidation down here in uh, late November, essentially. So we are once again brushing up against this region. We are still making lower highs as long as we are following this trend line, however, so I would say that this is still, you know, within limbo right now. And I think that this was actually constructed on a 12 hour, maybe by a dildo closes. Yes, indeed it is. Um, there we go, right here. In fact, if we go to the 12 hour, the 12 hour is getting it damn well with the uh, cyan 89 expansion average right here. So target's been met, backing off a little bit now. And now is the time to kind of, uh, you know, on the lower term timeframes, I think either be looking for a pullback as the low time frame oscillators are getting a little bit hot, uh, hotter here. Let me take off these uh, moving out, or sorry, these uh, trend lines here, make the charts a little bit less uh, clunky and we do see that four hour so actually still headed up what about three hour looks like the one across the upside two hour up as well hourly down so 
um you know it is it is suggesting that we likely grind out this area a little bit more do we get another move back up and test maybe around 75 50 ish region i think that's within the cards but i do not think that bitcoin is going to um you know close uh above 75 50 today if that's uh if, if that's a major concern um looking at these lower term time frames especially um uh, especially the four hour, we see that over the long term, we are actually still contracting. We've been following this trend line for quite some time. Uh, which I think has been getting it quite, quite well. And this last spike up that we see, you know, kind of meeting this trend line, which is telling us that we're likely hitting a major inflection point for now. Now, uh, again, I, I kind of, this doesn't need to be perfect. This needs to be like kind of a regression, get like a best fits. And uh, that's been getting all of our highs accurately within this uh, last consolidation. So, if I'm looking at Bitcoin from that from that way, I do think that Bitcoin probably trades sideways here for a little bit. Maybe makes another move up, maybe test like 7550. But I do, but uh, uh, but I would be looking for a pullback after that. I think an obvious pullback target is going to be somewhere right around uh, wherever CME is closed on Friday, which was a hair below 7400. But those, but they did have um, they did have about a 60 to 100 dollar premium on price action, and uh, you can see that we actually closed as a rejection of the 200 sim or the 200 simple on the four hour. So if we were to make an analogy, uh, an analogy, an analogy, an analogy with uh, with Bitcoin on that uh, spot price action, that'd probably put us somewhere back down around seventy three thirty ish region. So again, you know, about sixty dollars price premium on that um, would would be around there. So I do think that it's likely that Bitcoin maybe goes sideways here for a little bit later today, and then probably somewhere around the open of CMEs or uh, uh, later today, which is about five p.m. Eastern time, I believe, to tomorrow's open of New York Stock Exchange uh, for the regular trading week. I do think that we'll probably come back down here, fill the gap, and then the game begins. Um, so for right now, you know. You know what are we looking at well we are potentially looking at once again a hidden bearish divergence between this or actually no we are not sorry i apologize we are not we are not looking at hidden bearish divergence at all because we close on new highs actually fair enough okay cool um all right great that, that's actually that's actually pretty nice um anyways uh as it stands right now i just want to once again point out that we are you know riding the same trend line that we that we've been riding ever since we got into this more um aggressive downwards consolidation now now I'm gonna get in the fun part of this, uh, or sorry, actually before we get into the fun part, you know, if Bitcoin does take another leg up, I'd probably be looking somewhere around the 55 on the daily, which is um, about 75.50. Okay, perfect, yeah. Um, so again, that's sort of the next big area for myself. And as far as the macro goes, very little has changed. We have still yet to close on a higher time frame, like a 12 hour daily two day, uh, higher the better, of course, uh, anywhere above 75.50 ish region, which would create a higher high. And we have failed to close below 6,900, which I'm not bearish. I'm not, I'm not looking for another leg to the downside until we actually close below there. Actually, even just getting back below 7,000 is probably good enough. But like I said, to kind of start off today's video, let's do something a little bit fun here. I'm just going to, I'm going to force myself to be as bullish as possible. I'm going to force myself to put on the fucking bull horns and be as bull tarred as, as I can be and, uh, and come up with the best bullish scenario. So I can come up with a stupid, a very stupid and a very silly, uh, clickbait title, which if you've been tuning this content for a while, you already know all my titles are bullshit to begin with. So <laughs> you gotta, you gotta get them in first and then, and then punish them with all of the, uh, with all of the net, with, with, uh, with all the negative sentiments. But, uh, but for now, I actually do want to present a bullish case because, well, we're actually pretty damn close to initiating some things that actually could change the macro. So I want to first and foremost say this. I ain't fucking bullish until we actually do close a daily dildo above about 75.50-ish region. Two-day would be even better, and I do believe that we close this next two-day later tonight. Um, no, we do not. Tomorrow night at uh, 7 p.m. Eastern time. Anyways, okay, so as it stands right here, we do see that all higher time frame momentum oscillators are actually pointed up. We do see that two-day stokes up and maintaining the bullish control zone. So it does look to me like we've actually, uh, we you know, the, the same area that's been rejecting us for the past uh, six months since July, which was when Bitcoin put in the highs at around uh, 14000 bucks. Um, we are now actually exceeding or going to mount a legitimate attempt to exceed because usually when you see like a snake around like this, it is going to bust on through. Um, so we're actually going to be in the bullish controls on the top of that, and that would look overall good. Um, we do not have bullish divergence on a two day, but looks fine nonetheless. And if we could close a two day total above the 21 exponential mean average, that would be the first time really since this uh, this stutter step above 9,000, um, which was our last major move. Anyways, uh, going over to the daily, 
We do see that Daily Stokes looking as well, like they have come down, tested around the bearish control zone, and they're somewhat rejecting it right now. If we close here or higher by end of day, I would expect those to open back up and, uh, and well, once again, be on the upside. Uh, and then three-day Stokes also, uh, also um, opening up as well. And I believe that the weekly is doing the same sort of thing. And the weekly is actually very, very interesting here because we have been following the same, the same trend line ever since uh, February of, of, of 2019. And February of 2019 was actually the bullish momentum being gained from the higher low right around here. Let me just make sure that I'm recording. Okay, my microphone's working as well. Let's see what else we got. All right, cool. Oh, and I should also mention, I fucking forgot again. Um, I should also mention that uh, Twitch, I'm going to be on later today. I do apologize about not being on later. Uh, sorry, yesterday, it was for good reason. Had to do a lot of setup stuff, had to do a lot of uh, administration type stuff. And well, more bullshit. <laughs> anyways, uh, anyways, for, you know, for, for what it's worth, um, again, this is where that last, uh, sorry, uh, 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 this is where that trend line's anchored. And then also found our lows right around here in October before this major pump up to our top side resistance. This was about a $3,000 pump. And then now we are once again, uh, confirming to the upside and we will confirm to the upside with any sort of a close, especially above the cyan 89 expenditure damage on the weekly. So that's what I'm looking at right now. And so far, so good, essentially. Uh, this, the Cyan 89 is coming in right around 72.60. So as long as we close above there, very, 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 very likely that we actually do that. And, uh, and you know, do we have a legitimate chance to test the tops out of this resistance once again, somewhere around mid eights? Actually, yes. And of course, if we do go down to the lower term timeframes and we talk about that same sort of uh, descending brawny wedge that we've been looking at for the last uh, month and a half, two months since uh, middle of November, then that actually would be what the bulls are looking at. So if you're if you're bullish, you're looking at this as a descending brawny wedge with a target all the way up here towards about 8,500, which would be in line with our long-term downturn resistance line coming in all the way from our, from our highs at 14,000 bucks, lines up with a lot of other things. And uh, we do see that volume, volume signature does confirm this. We see a nice declining volume right here, which does imply that we probably get our break in about a week somewhere around here when it's about 75% full is when it becomes very, 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 very likely to break. I'd imagine that uh, historic volatility percentile also agrees with that. And what do you know? We can see that it's contracting here as well. This would actually speak to the macro, which the macro being this massive falling channel, which typically does break out to the upside, um, probably breaks somewhere around here. So. April, May uh, ish region, April, May. So we still got a lot of time to kind of work our way through this region. Um, but for now, you know, do we potentially have a low in? Well, I'm going to try my best to, to really, uh, to really make the argument for it. So with that said, let, let me see what, what else do I have here? Um, the, you know, th this, this three drives of lows that you see classic, pretty damn good. Also in another, another point on the bull side, I suppose. Um, what else do we have? We have the um, we have the Bitcoin difficulty ribbons right here, which I want to talk about a little bit. So here's the thing. This is a more fundamental indicator, of course, and uh, it's fucking blinding me is what it's doing. Um, but anytime that we see the difficulty ribbon essentially converge on itself, that is when Bitcoin is typically putting in major, major lows. And you actually notice that it's a little bit of a, um, a little bit of a, uh, what's it called, of a reactive indicator, meaning that it tells you, you know, after the fact in a sense. And you can see that anytime that it converges on its on itself, like, uh, you know, a lot, the lows already been put in, the lows already been put in and Bitcoin is kind of nearing the end of its long-term consolidation. So you see this guy right here, you know, it converges on itself. That you know, when it starts like really converging after it was extremely diverged, that's when you're that's when you're actually bearish. But when it actually converges on itself, like completely collapses on itself, that's when your lows already been put in and you're getting ready for the next move. So same thing right here, same thing right here, same thing right here, right here, right here. And you know, we are getting damn close to each other once again. So I would say that, that would be perhaps, you know, kind of like tilt your head and squint your eyes a little bit more on the bull side, right? Um, anyways, Bitcoin network momentum is uh, still, still for now, making higher lows. It's also making lower highs and lower lows. It's not an uptrend, it's what I'm trying to say. But uh, but hey, if we do hold up above this, this current low, uh, this has been the bottoming area for the last uh, couple of moves. Um, that we've seen, you know, the 3100 region, and then also this region that we're looking at right here. Uh, if you are, God damn, I get this fucking message a million times a day, um, but I'll just talk about it right now. Um, if you are a di uh, uh, what's it called diagonally uh, inclined minded type person, and you're looking at our switcheroo from uh, what was it, 2015 September, to our lows in uh, 2019, 
and uh, and kind of matching up with what we're looking at right now. We have bottomed out around that region. We are also around the 618 Fibonacci retracement, which is your classic, you know, bottoming area. Or not not, uh, not a classic bottoming area, but it is a golden pocket. Typically does get respect, typically does produce at the very least a nice bounce, um, of which we haven't really seen one just yet. Um, not only that, but we have hit some pretty massive uh, volume profile nodes. You see this guy coming in here, uh, get, uh, catching that 6500 spike down. Um, what else do we have? Um, I also want to look at the total mark cap really, really quick and see what we have here. Don't worry, if you are bearish after this, I'm going to destroy everything that I just said. <laughs> um, but looking at the uh, total mark cap, I do think that it's worthwhile to mention that we actually did get a full on move down all the way into the 200 X benchmark mean average and pretty much 200 simple as well. And this is kind of where I was looking for Bitcoin to come down um, on spot price action. So to see it already come down there on the total mark cap, while you know not as good as spot price action, does represent the greater market in, in, in its whole more or less okay. And that could you know kind of count, I suppose as a test down there um, and so far so good so the reaction is nice and probably would be expecting more than what we've gotten thus far um, okay what else what else have I written down over here ah yes that is it um, the other things that I'd like to mention is the correlation with gold of course gold having actually a very similar formation here a nice falling channel coming off the uh, highs okay I need to redo this whole chart let's let's just redo this whole chart <clears throat> boom that's all you need boom and then some like this, we have some, we have some sort of a target going to like 1600, I'd imagine. Oh, what do you know? The target to 1600, crazy. It lines up so perfectly. There we go. <clears throat> Nicely done. Nicely done as I talk to myself like a fucking <sighs> Mongolian. Anyways, um, <laughs> sorry, if you are Mongolian, I mean it in the most, uh, in the most nice ways possible. Determined of endearment. Anyways, um, gold looking very, very good. Uh, we have not closed on new highs just yet, but I am overall bullish on the macro for gold. As we have been, we hit our, we hit our, we hit both our 1530 uh, target, then also our 1550 target. Um, I do think that it's likely it actually does pull back to open up the week a little bit, pull back target, perhaps back down here. Um, towards 1530 but that's that's beside the point what I'm trying to show right now is that you know gold is bullish and probably you know probably reaching reaching up above longer term uh, that $1,600 mark and the reason why that's relevant is because looking at the correlation coefficient over here showing the macro correlation between gold spot and Bitcoin spot on stamp we do see uh, of course when we go to weekly which does represent the macro trend we do see that we actually are positively correlated right here and if we're positively correlated and gold is rallying then that would bode well for Bitcoin over the long term as well and we do kind of see a similar price action here I suppose you know massive massive rally massive breakout uh, downwards channel consolidation which typically does break out to the upside this one's obvious this one's a lot more an obvious uh, bull flag uh, falling channel essentially and this is a lot more obvious accumulation over a long period of time um but going back to bitcoin and just kind of eyeballing it you do see that uh similar in a sense you know major massive move up and then downwards consolidation in a falling channel although not as strong to be fair um so you know does does hold some weight and then the next piece of uh, information is what i look at is the uh, is is spy so traditional marks over here so same thing we'll look at but uh, of course when looking at traditional markets weekly is not really going to get it the monthly is going to get your macro macro trend so looking at it so putting on a monthly right here we can see that spy is incredibly bullish uh phenomenal close on the last month um i do think that it's kind of likely we do trade down to open up this month maybe this coming week we come down perhaps to, uh, I, I don't really have like specific targets but 315 as as as, as long as we're above 315 fine i think that it's likely to come down to like three um 319 uh, very likely um 317 would be another bouncy bounce area and then yes 315 but as long as it maintains about 315 i'm more or less bullish over the long term and once again looking at the correlation coefficient for the macro of spy we do see that bitcoin is positively correlated with it so uh, for all the crypto anarchists you know rooting for traditional marks to fall down and fail it, thinking that it's going to benefit bitcoin it's very unlikely to uh same thing with you know like uh, with like the us and iran uh, perhaps going to war uh, we actually had one of our community members yesterday, uh, Sanaz. Shout out to Sanaz. She's absolutely amazing. Uh, kind of shed some light on the situation, saying essentially that uh, no, Bitcoin is not trading at new all-time highs in 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 Iran. Um, it's it's literally trading just a little bit above spot right now, maybe at like 7,600, and that is a complete misunderstanding um, from just people who want to perpetuate some sort of a myth that they think benefits them and really hurts a lot of other people, which is really, really fucked up. Um, all jokes aside, uh, if you want more information of that, I posted screenshots of her conversation uh, with Sanaz. Um, 
I hope I'm getting her name right uh, on Twitter yesterday, so it still should be there. And uh, there you go. Anyways, um, yeah. Uh, so you know, as far as the macro goes for uh, for spy, very very bullish here. We see that uh, monthly has broken out of its descending broadening wedge to the upside and back into the bullish control zone. We see that uh, monthly Stokes holding the same area that we've held ever since like 2009, <laughs> right around here, and uh, rallying once again. Now we are kind of getting near, you know, potentially a local top, but for now, you know, fine. Anyways, long term, I just want to show that I am still bullish on this and very very bullish on this and we've been bullish on it ever since basically back around here when we regained the 21 but especially uh breaking back above like 280 285 region i believe it was anyways um okay so i think that's about it for the bullish case on bitcoin um you know there there are some some heavy considerations there of course but at the end of the day i want to be very 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 um accurate in stating this until bitcoin even closes like a daily dildo or even even a 12 hour but a daily would be preferable to it and, and two days obviously better than that above about 7500 7550 uh we're still in a downtrend and as, as long as we're in a downtrend there's no real reason to be like excited about this bullshit. um so uh so for all the excitement that i just kind of proposed uh well I'd kind of titrate that down a little bit. Uh, oh, I also do realize that uh, the two-day jewel is actually it's kind of getting you, giving you a little bit of a continuation uh, buy signal here. It's not perfect or anything like that, but it it looks like it's getting support um, again, way way far in the periphery. I'm not really seeing any other. Uh, we we can look at the lower time frame jewels maybe a little bit later. Um, but I don't, I don't, I don't recall seeing any perfect signals uh, anytime soon. Anyways, um, as it stands right now, you know, if we can close above 7550, I would target a move towards about 78, 7900 Bitcoin. And personally speaking, while I do think that we'd have a little bit of a pullback there, I would look for extension overall to the top side of resistance um, again uh, towards our measured move somewhere right around here, about 8500, which is also in line with our long-term downtrend resistance. And also the th and also kind of around the 382 fib as well um, anyways uh, with that said um, as long as Bitcoin is still making lower highs am I really bullish on price action fuck no I'm not <laughs> um, I'm just trading ranges and uh, and right now as you know as we kind of spoke about in the lower term time frames it looks like we grind out 7500 a little bit more but I would be looking for Bitcoin to pop back down to like 73 uh, 73 50ish region um, probably between now and tomorrow um, of course it's not financial fi uh, financial advice I'm not a financial advisor I'm not even really trading this one right now um, Oh, but I should say, I actually will be posting live trades in the member section of YouTube. The member section of YouTube is actually different than the member section of Discord and whatnot. They're just completely different things. The reason why I made that basically is because people have been stealing my free content and then trying to resell it to other people and then pretending that it's like my actual programs, like the like the actual ones uh, 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 that I allow people to pay for. Um, so it's re it's really fucked up. So the reason why I did that and the reason why I'll probably, uh, you know, try to put a little bit of a stamp on that is because, well, then I can just, you know, put it in there and they probably won't go after it, hopefully. Um, and I've actually already put a lot of a uh, lot of content into the member section. Um, that was once free as well because they were like literally trying to sell my free content and then people were like buying it. And, you know, I have a little, I don't have very much love loss for people who like buy an obvious fucking scam um, and then contacted me and saying, hey man, this contact is, or, is, or th this, th this, this content isn't so good i was expecting more and it's like yeah that's my free content there you just you literally bought my fucking free content <laughs> so fair enough anyways um okay it looks like my phone's going crazy right now bitcoin's even back on off a little bit right now so maybe we do see this move back down to like i don't know 73 maybe even 72 50 ish region sooner rather than later i don't really have a strong opinion on that um as it stands right now uh as Bitcoin still making lower highs, we are actually within the context of a descending triangle right here on the lows. And to take that one step further, not only are we on a descending triangle within uh, 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 on a two day, um, but if we do break 6,900, if we even break back down below like 7,100, I would be bearish. So that's what I need to be um, bearish. Just like above 7,550 uh, for me is bullish, below 7,100 is like, major red flag below 6900 it's like defcon if you want to call it that and uh in resolving below 6900 would confirm this as a descending triangle the volume signature does work out as you can see right here and the measure move would be pointing us all the way down towards this blue box territory right around here which is in low 6000s which is also synonymous with our 2018 uh historical horizontal support um and also the bottom side uh conveniently the bottom side of this uh long-term downtrend resistance or downtrend support uh trend line 
And then I'm sure if we put in a fib, it's probably gonna be some coming in there as well. And then if we do show volume profile, you will notice that we do have some higher value notes coming in that region, kind of like the last Mohicans for that uh, region as well. So likely to get some love in that uh, in that region for a little bit of low term, low time frame bounce. But personally speaking, I do think that it would only just be that a bounce, and then we probably dribble on through. And realistically, I'd be looking for a potential low to be put in at the first at you know at the first sight of the um, of the 200 simple and 200 exponential mean average, which are essentially outlining 5500 to 5200 ish region which is essentially an order block coming back from uh april of last year and uh i'd imagine that if we did take a bullish retracement we're probably going to see some major fib come in there uh, come within that region let me just let me just check. Yeah, indeed, we do see the 786 Fibonacci come in that region, which is actually where Bitcoin did bottom out in the, in the last couple of uh, market cycles. We see this guy right here, or sorry, the uh, yeah, the the 786 right here, 786 right here as well. So, um, so it's, you know, so keep your eyes on that um, if we do break down. But of course, again, that's only if we break below 7100. Major red flag, 6900, like red alert. Um, anyways. Uh, uh, I'm not looking for a break of this um, of this falling channel anytime soon. If it does break, uh, like I said, probably like March or sorry, uh, April, May region. So we still got months. Um, I don't really think that it happens anytime soon. So for, so for all the people saying imminent breakout coming today to a million Bitcoin, you're. <sighs> Anyways, um, anyways, anyways, um, okay, cool. So we spoke about all of that. Uh, let's go look. At, let's go look at expected moves with regards to historical volatility. We do see. Wait, let's go to a. Let's go to a daily. <clears throat> We do see that actually the top side of the first innovation is coming in around 7650. So when talking about probabilities, this is the first time where we actually really have a strong probabilistic chance, strong t statistical chance to close on higher highs. Uh, again, our higher high being about 75, 75, 50 ish region. So that's well within the top side or well within the bounds of this uh, first kind of uh, standard deviation, which is well to this side right around here. It, it's actually hard to kind of eyeball exactly what the um, st uh, st uh, statistic would be, but I'd imagine if I had to guess like 30% chance maybe, which is obviously higher than yesterday, um, you know, so, you know, somewhere in this region right here, because you have to like take half of that, of, of that confidence interval. And then, but it's also not really that it's a little bit higher because it's like another hundred bucks higher. So maybe somewhere around there. I don't know. Bali can probably reprimand me in the comments and say, nah, bro, it's actually like 10% or whatever the fuck. Well, fair enough. Um, uh, to get above 7650 today though, uh, quite unlikely would be less than a 16% chance. Um, and uh, well, and I don't think that we're getting to 79 or 8200 or anything like that uh, today. Um, by the same token, to the downside, you can see that we actually do have uh, some pretty uh, some pretty important things going on. Um, the first standard deviation to the downside is coming around 7200. So that is well above even the first major red flag territory of 7100. And um, and well, that's a big deal because that's literally less than a 60 percent percent chance now that we go down to there from uh, from this region. So, you know, you are seeing that Bitcoin is starting to produce a little bit more of a bullish case. Um, and what I can say now is I want to mark off some very, very critical areas on the lower term time frames um, so that we can uh, document this going forwards. So, you know, I do think that Bitcoin is going to pull back, uh, like I said, probably like 7300, maybe 7250. But uh, let's come up with, you know, because because waiting till like 7100 gets hit is just going to be too far away. Um, I would say that 7300 is going to be an important area. And then also, seven, I'm guessing this is like 7250. Yeah, right in line with the 200 simple on the four hour, somewhere in this region right here. So kind of like the middle of this current trading range um, within this blue box territory right here, I would outline as a nice kind of inflection point from the lower term time frames, as long as you know, as, as long as we're not breaking the bottom side of this uh, sort of order block right here at about 72, 7250. So let's call it 7250, just a little bit easier. Um, you know, I, I suppose I'm still like overall, uh, you know, I'd be looking for a pullback, but probably, um, well, we still have lower highs. I mean, no major red flags. But if we do break below this region, 7250, let's call it. Um, that's when I look for a test fully and formally of 7100. That's where things start to change though. That, that's where my bias once again to the downside is like immediate pressure. Um, and, uh, and I'd very much be looking for another retest of this liquid zone down here, which I'll now point out <clears throat> in this region between about 6950 and 6900 even. So, so th this is kind of like neutral zone breaking below. I'd look for a move to about 7,100, probably another bounce to 7,100. But if 7,100 breaks, that's that's a first major red flag. And I would look for a move down here. If this area breaks, that's like DEFCON for me. 
Um, well, not necessarily DEF CON. I mean, I'd, I'd be happy for Bitcoin to break down. It's not, a, you know, we're fucking traders here. We don't, we don't care about moons. Um, anyways, uh, okay, fair enough. Um, 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 and I understand that not everyone who's watching this content is not, is not a trader, but understand that that's, you know, who it's designed for. So we're always coming from that, you know, scope. Um, okay, what else do we have? Um, let's see. I feel like I'm missing a few things. Uh, let's go look at the Bitcoin VWAP ratio. It is still very heavily bearish. In fact, we'll go through the explanation today. Um, okay, cool. Whoops, wrong one. Let me actually just get rid of this. There we go. Let's get rid of this one as well. Okay, beautiful. All right, so we have a very specific signature here on the Bitcoin VWAP ratio, which is a volume weighted average price. And we got three different um, uh, mo uh, uh, mo periods on that. The blue is the very reactive. The purple is the middle reactive. The pink is the least reactive. And any time that we've seen the purple, or sorry, uh, next sort of piece of information. I want you to look at where my cursor is right now. Run a regression right through that in a horizontal line. Just, 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 uh, just, just use that as a base of if we're generally above on all three of those uh, moving averages on the VWAP, we're generally bullish. If we're, if we're below, we're generally bearish. Now let's take that a couple steps further. If we see the middle, uh, which uh, uh, the middle reactionary one, which is the purple, go below the pink when they're both below the regression, that has actually led on to all Bitcoin's major, major drop downs. We have an example right here. And I want you to remember this because we're gonna go through it and measure them all out so that I can point back to this video and then not have to do this every fucking day. <laughs> um, but we have this example right here, basically topping out about 10,000 and the next major down to like 3,100. We have this example right here. Um, uh, uh, we take the prior high to the next low, 20,000 down to uh, 6,000, about a 70% down. Uh, we have this one right here from this bull trap down to next low. We have this one right here from this high down to next low. We have another, another example right here, this high to this low, and then this one to this low, which is just absolutely destructive. destructive. But going back to our chart, um, let's do this out and uh, we can briefly do this. So. So remember, we had an example right here. So high to low, 62.5%. Uh, this one right here to next low, 70, 69%. Oh, great number. Um, then we had this bull trap right here, if you remember. Uh, so from high to low, 76.5%. We had this one right here, high to low, 71.5%. This one right here, high to low, 74.5%. And then this one back here, which was like even more than that. Um, and then of course, looking at this right now, we have the same signature as of right here. So taking the prior high of about 14,000 bucks down to our next low, or sorry, you know, just shaving off uh, for, you know, for argument's sake, about 70%, 69%. Where does that put us down towards? Mid to low 4,000s actually. So, you know, from this perspective, is Bitcoin out of the woods just yet, even if it does rally up here? No, it's not. And what's very dubious about these uh, long market cycles is that we can have another $2,000 move to the upside and still not change around the overall macro trend. Remember, the macro trend is di is dictated on a weekly in Bitcoin land. And in order to get that, we not just we not only need a higher low, but we also need a higher high. And in order to get a higher high, we need to get back above about 9,500 on a weekly total closing basis, which, if you remember, is much further down below uh, not only uh, not only the, the our long-term resistance trend line, but also the measure move to the upside that we'd have around 8,500, also three. Two Fibonacci retracement, also the weekly 21 expansion moon average, also the weekly 10 moon average, which is now crossing below the, uh, the, uh, the weekly 55, and a lot of issues there. Um, so that's what I'd say about that. Um, so, yes, you know, could we rally up all the way to 8,500, reject, and then still fall on down? Possible, yeah. I, I'm, I'm not macro bullish on Bitcoin officially until we create a higher high. And I, and I want to be very, very straightforward in saying that because, well, there's probably going to be someone who's saying, Brown didn't call the bottom again. It's like, I'm never going to call the bottom. Uh, you know, I'll get long right here, but I won't call the bottom right here. I'll get short right here, but I won't get short at 20,000 right here. It's always when I get a confirmation of a weekly reversal. That is when I'll do it. Um, so, yeah. Um, anyways, uh, okay. I think we've discussed that. We've beaten that dead horse. Um, what, oh, yes. Also, uh, very important, the monthly, right? The monthly. Okay, so the monthly did technically close above the 21 expansion moon average. What I would say is, is that, uh, funnily enough, look at where the 10 simple is coming in on the monthly. It's coming in around 8,500. So, as long as we're, you know, on a monthly's closing basis, as long as we're below about 91, 9,200, we're still kind of bearish. Um, if we do trade above last month's high, it doesn't really do too much. But I would say that if we do trade above last month's high, which is 7,777 um, on Stamp, 
I would look for a move to the 10 simple. That's pretty much in line with the move of the descending brawny wedge to about 8,500 ish region. Also, the 10 simple on the monthly here. Uh, but more importantly, uh, if we take out last month's low, which was 64.25, that's when I'd start to really look for that move into the lower 5,000. So 5,200 to the 5,500 region would be the next stop um, on like a macro monthly scale, and then probably lower for that, uh, lower than that over time. Uh, we do see that monthly Stokes are down, rejecting the bullish control zone. We do see that monthly RSI is down, rejecting the bullish control zone, rejecting the exponential, and and still further falling. Um, not only that, but if we throw on our uh, accumulation distribution indicator right here, which I very rarely look at because um, it doesn't really op update all that much, we actually got our first negative slope in a very long time since uh, January of last year, literally a year ago. And uh, while we have gotten negative slopes in the past where the overall macro trend did still remain bullish, um, you know, coming back on over here, we actually still do, uh, at, you know, any, any time that we've gotten a negative slope, we have collapsed further and, um, and really put out some, some massive downside, even, you know, even on this more bullish attempt right here, which was still like a 37% move to the downside, um, to put it in perspective. So I want to actually, uh, convey this in a different way that when we do see the negative slope happen, that is indicative of distribution, um, on a monthly scale. And if we go down to a lower time frame like, uh, you know, you know, like this uh, daily two day, what do we have here? We have a descending triangle. So I believe that actually kind of does con uh, confirm it a little bit more on the side of being a descending triangle. In fact, because we're seeing distribution over this course of, of the last month and we're seeing lower highs, lower lows, we are seeing a, a bearish redistribution pattern in this case, and we're seeing trend is also down as well. So, <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's not so good. Um, so again, I, you know, just because I presented a bullish case to begin with, understand the critical points that still, you know, supersede everything else. Um, what else do we want to look at? This video is already 35 minutes long. Um, I think what we can start to do now is we could look at we could look at weekly moving averages. Um, anytime that we've had both negative slopes on the 10 simple and the yellow 21 expansion moving average from the last high to next low has been, well, quite a bit. Uh, we have this example right here. They both get negative slopes right here. We take the prior high to next low. 69%, great number. Um, where is the next example before that? And they both have to have negative slopes. Uh, we have this example right here on the bull trap of 2014, 2015 mark cycle. So prior high to next low, 78%. Uh, we have this example right here, negative slopes right here, take prior high to next low, 71%. Another example right here, negative slopes on both of them, take prior high to next low. What do you know? Another 74%. And what do we have over here? They obviously both have negative slopes on them. And thus far, we have done 53% down, which is, you know, big, it's a big deal, um, but it's not it's not near that like 70% marker, which again would put us back down around uh, mid 4,000. So I actually do think that mid 4,000 is still, you know, in the cards, um, especially as long as we're living below 9,500. So it's, it's Bitcoin has a lot of work to do. It doesn't mean that it can't happen. It doesn't mean that it can't, it can't rally back above there, but until it does, it's always gonna be a thought in the back of my mind's eye that uh, macro is still kind of bearish. You know, we still are operating off of lower highs. Um, so yeah, um, okay. I guess we'll brief, because it is a weekend and we don't really have anything new to look at on Forex or traditional markets, we can briefly look at some of the top shit coins really, really quick. Or actually, first let's look at Bitcoin dominance, um, of which I'm bullish on it long-term. Would I still be bullish on it long-term? Um, yeah, the weekly still bullish to me, but, but do we have a little bit more of a downside to play out here? Um, no, I, 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 I do think that it's actually going to bounce here. Um, I do think that it's going to bounce here. But uh, hey, if we take out this 69 spot, 65 low, I would look for a move all the way down towards like 69%. So if that does happen, again, if we take out 69 spot, 65 low, I would be looking for a little bit of an alt party, um, short to medium term, but I'd still be long term bullish on it. Um, as long as we don't have that, I'm still short term, medium term and long term bullish. M, what else we have? Okay. Uh, all right, let's go look at a couple of the top shit coins really, really quick. See if we can come up with another bias on this. Uh, Mr. Buterall, what are we doing? Uh, do we have new highs? Um, not on a daily dual closing basis. Still kind of operating in the context of a rising channel bear flag. I, you know, I'm, I'm still, I'm still very, very, very apprehensive about this price action. This is technically a bearish distribution pattern and, um, well, until we actually close back above like 138, I, I have, I'm, I'm, I'm concerned about it. Uh, what about Mrs. Litecoin? Oh, what do you know? Another rising channel bear flag here, uh, popping off at resistance right now at 42 or sorry, 43 and a quarter. You know, does this come back down? Yeah, I do think so. I think both are, fi are finding local highs. So I stick with what I said on Bitcoin. I do think that Bitcoin is finding a local high within this region. We probably come back down, you know, sometime in the next day. Um, 
We want to look at the other ones. We can look at Ripple Me Nipples really quick. Uh, same thing, kind of operating, uh, well, a little bit more of an ascending triangle actually. So, uh, but but you know, but selling off the uh, 21 exponential moving average thus far. So not that not that impressive right now. Weekly is kind of catching, you know, having a little bit of a bull wick. I don't. I, kind of really splitting hairs here. The trend is fucking down. The trend is down, and the trend is your friend. Uh, EOS trend down. Actually, this one looks like it wants to rally up a little bit too. Um, so fair enough. Anyways, that's enough for that. I think it's to wrap. I think it's time to wrap up uh, this whole talk um, now. And uh, again, the macro still very much set. Two day deal to close above the 20 minute exponential average or, or or basically above a new high on like a daily uh, above 75, 7550. I would look for extension to 78, 7900 and probably even more than that over time to 8500. Uh, by the same token, until that happens, I mean, we're kind of at the top side of resistance. I do think it's more likely that we actually do come back down and test around 73, maybe 7250. Um, but I don't get really bearish on this once again until we actually break below 7100, close a higher time frame below 7100, and then very, very bearish, like, like no. <laughs> no holding back below 6,900, you know, target moves down to the low 6,000, probably even lower than that over time. Um, so yeah, you know, again, going back to the lower time frames right here. Um, let's just look at this really, really quickly. Do I have it? Did I do it on this chart or this? Yeah, this chart. Um, so yeah, you know, likely coming back down to the blue box territory here between 73 and 7250 ish region. If we do break below 7250, I would look for extension to 71. That's the next big test though. To the upside, same sort of thing 75, 7550. If we could close a you know, higher time from above there, I would get, you know, overall bullish on this. So for right now, um, that's going to do it, I think. I'm going to be uploading this video. Then I'm going to go eat as much food as possible because I'm hungry as fuck. Anyways, um, <laughs> anyways, uh, let's see. Did I miss anything else? Oh, I think that's about it. I, I would like to wish you the best of the best, as always, and the happiest of the happiest, too. Uh, like I said, I'll very, 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 very likely be back on Twitch later tonight playing some COD, maybe playing some uh, Elder Scrolls. I don't know what game we're going to play, but whatever the fuck it is, probably going to be fun. Um, more than welcome to join on in. Understand that, uh, you know, analysis is a little bit more in the background. Gaming is more in the foreground on that. Um, but, you know, it's a fun community, really, really cool environment, and uh, I've been really enjoying it. So more than welcome to join on that. Links in the description of this video. Um, other than that, I'll be back on tomorrow with some more video analysis. I'd say that, you know, we're probably like the unlikely to get any like crazy, crazy move before we get the new weekly. Um, and with that said, as always, enjoy and take care.